Okay guys, I'm gonna show y'all how to convert a 12 volt old 1940s, uh, early 50s car into a 12, uh, 12 volt system from six volt to 12 volts. A lot of benefits to it. Uh, I'll put all these parts, wiring, alternator, 12 volt fuse panel, all of this cost, uh, it cost me around $240. Okay, so I ordered a bunch of parts off of Amazon for the wiring. I'm gonna go ahead and do kind of like a tutorial on how to wire one of these. So. You can buy a kit online for this car with all the wiring and it has a, it comes with a generator that looks like an alternator but it's over a thousand shut up but it's over a thousand dollars and uh i ordered all the parts to convert it and i just kind of piecemealed it all together really and uh it looks like it's gonna be it was it was around 230 dollars and this is what i got so far i got a whole box of connectors i have a 12 volt general motors alternator and i and I'm gonna have to change the belt, the pulley to a, a thicker pulley, the 5 8 pulley. That was another $20. I got an electric fuel pump. I have a 12 volt starter solenoid. I got a bunch of rolls of wire. I have some battery terminals. I bought battery cables. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this in sections. I'm gonna install the alternator and I'm just gonna hook up the ignition wiring. Then after I do the ignition wiring, I'll show i'll show you how to convert the gauges and so what i'll do so i don't have to bore you is i'll go ahead and just run the the wires and then i'll show you ignition section wiring fuse panel and then i'll show the gauges and lights very very easy you could wire one of these in one day okay all right i'm gonna get after it and then i'll chime back in right about now basically what you need to do is you need to remove your your alternator that's the first things first remove the alternator um you can actually sell that and recoup some of your money uh the first thing i did was i got lucky and i have an old ford tractor and what i did was i got a um a conversion kit for it and it ended up need, not needing the bracket so this is a uh a bracket for a 1950s model Ford 8N tractor and it just bolts straight down to here where the uh, the old the generator was mounted and what I did was I took two bolts one on each side and I'm able to take that new mount and just slide it on there and then adjust these nuts so I can push out on these nuts and then tighten and then tighten the alternator down this is very simple I'm gonna do this in, in two sections I'm gonna make this there's a lot of videos out there on like the painless wiring kits you can just buy a roll of, of uh, 14 gauge wire and just do it yourself it's very 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 simple I started from scratch what I did was I completely took all the wiring and I just cut it didn't even look at anything just cut it ripped it all out pulled the gauges out cut ripped all the wiring out the only thing I left was the brake light wiring this car did not come with turn signals so I'm gonna add turn signals I bought a kit and I had I bought a new 12 volt ignition switch and I'll, I'm going to do this in sections to where it's going to be the ignition part portion first. I'll show you how to hook up the ignition. So basically, your charging system, your spark, and then your fuel pump. That's it. Basic. If you're going to use a fuel pump. If you're, if you're going to keep the mechanical fuel pump, that part will be out of it. Basically, just what you need to start the car up and then drive it around. Um, I'm not going to do the lights or anything like that. But it's going to be, once you figure, once you get the idea um, of this in your head and you get the ignition wired in everything else is is basic it's just like adding anything if you add a spotlight to a car it's basically like adding a headlight if you add a radio to a car you know it's you can run it all to this fuse panel so what i did was i bought a gm a general motors alternator i'm gonna put the link in the, the description this was 49 dollars. this is remanufactured this is a three wire alternator so the first thing you want to do you're gonna have three hookups one two and three so you're gonna have a terminal one a terminal two and then you're gonna have your your uh, power wire so terminal two what you're gonna want to do is go is make a little jump though from terminal two you want to jumper it off and go to the to the the battery cable on the alternator that's it jump it from terminal two to the battery cable on the alternator now terminal one terminal one you're gonna run that you can run that to the a, um, the ignition side of your key switch so whenever you turn the key on it turns the alternator on. It tells it to start charging. 50% of the time, you're gonna need to put a diode in or a light. So what you'll do is you'll run the number one wire into your cab of your, your vehicle and you'll hook it up to a light bulb or a one-way diode. You can buy a one-way diode where electricity will only flow one way. That way it doesn't backfeed. What happens is it'll backfeed and the car will stay running all the time. So when you turn the key off, this will alternator will backfeed into your switch and then leave the system running. So what you want to do is that one wire run into the cab you can hook it up to a just a gm generator you can 
find a GM generator light online, hook that, and then off of the light, you're going to go to the ignition side of the key switch. So from here, number one wire into the cab, diode or generator light, and then off of that light to the key switch. So, and then the uh, the third wire is your battery wire. I'm just gonna run this wire straight to your straight to your your, your positive battery cable. Simple as that. Three wires. One's jumper, one's to the ignition, and then one goes to the positive side of the battery cable. So once you get that, you can go ahead and figure out every car is going to be different. You just got to play with it. Just mess with it and figure out, you know, make sure you have the right pulley. You can use the original belt and then just kind of mess with it. Maybe if you can weld or you can buy a, a kit. I'm going to kind of have to fool with this one a little bit to get it perfect, but I mean, it's really easy to get these things set up. Okay, so once you get the alternator, once you get the alternator wired and mounted, what you're gonna do is you're gonna buy a 12 volt, you're gonna have to change your starter solenoid. So when you turn the key to start, this is what sends power down to the starter. 12 volt starter relay. And then I bought this um, fuse panel, 12 volt fuse panel from Amazon. I'll put it in the description. This was like $16, I think. It was definitely under 20 bucks. And this thing's cool because it has indicators on it. It'll tell you if your fuse is blown. So every single one of these circuits, I only have three circuits hooked up. And I'll go over that here in a second, eat what each one goes. So after the alternator's done, mount your starter solenoid. And on this, this side of the, one side of the, whenever you get the starter solenoid, it's gonna tell you where to connect them. So like this one right here, it says ignition. This one says starter. Here's your battery. And then the other side goes down to your starter. So this side right here, this left side, you're gonna have straight to your battery. This one right here where it says ignition. This one right here where it says ignition. This is going to go to your ignition coil, to your ignition coil. And what that does is that wire, while you're cranking the engine, because this is a, your, your coil is gonna need a ballast. A ballast goes from six volts, goes from 12 volts to six volts. The, power, the coil cannot have 12 volts constant run into it. So what that does is momentarily while you're starting the vehicle and there's being a draw from the battery, it'll send 12 volts directly to the coil so you can it'll start help start your car faster. On the other side, this, where it has the S, that's your starter on your key switch. So this wire, you wanna run it into the cab. <clears throat> And right here on your on your uh, on your ignition switch where you turn the key, you're gonna run that wire to the S or the starter. So when you turn your key over, boom, and then off, it start and it sends power to that solenoid which starts the car. So it's as, as simple as that. That's all you have to do. After you mount that and you have that wired, the only wire that I reused was this this cable this power cable that goes from the starter to the starter solenoid after that you want to run a jumper i didn't i bought all 14 gauge wire so what i did and i'm still not done with this i'm just kind of doing it in sections like i told you what i did with this with this was i took two 14 gauge wires kind of made a thicker wire and i ran this into the cab this is remember this is the battery side you can run it off the starter solenoid power all the time or you can run it straight off the battery run it into the cab and you want to run that this wire off the battery you want to run that to the battery side of your key switch. So your that gives your your gives your key switch power. Okay, now once your key switch has power, you're going to want to run power out to your fuse panel. So right here, there's a stud on the fuse panel. That's your power going into the fuse panel. And on this car, I went ahead and made everything switched. I mean, or it's supposed to be switched. It's, you know, obviously for the ignition when you turn the key, the key on and you have ignition, you have spark, you have your um, alternator power and then you have your um, fuel pump so power this power goes to the fuel pa fuse panel and that wire runs in to the key switch and it goes to the ignition side the ignition side of your key switch so whenever you turn the key on to ignition it sends battery power to the ignition side out and then it goes to your fuse panel so once your this means all this has power now then you can start hooking up your uh, your ignition wires your accessory devices so this first wire is positive this is all positive the first wire i ran out i put a 10 amp fuse on it i believe this first one was my ignition so this wire runs straight to the coil well it actually runs to these two wires so whenever i turn the key on i have power to this wire and it's going to plug into a ballast um i'll t i'll put a picture of a ballast right here so you're going to plug that in so it's going to go into the ballast 12 volts in it's going to go out of the ballast six volts and it's going to go to your ignition coil so while you're running your car you have spark out of the coil. It's gonna go down into your distributor. Second circuit that I have is your, 
your alternator. So this car, um, I'm gonna go ahead and try it without the diode just to see what happens. Basically what I'm doing is I'm just running it. When I turn my key on, I'm gonna have power out into the, I need to crimp these better, the wire came out, to the alternator. So that's gonna give my alternator power. The number one side. The third accessory that I have is my fuel pump. So this wire, turn your key on, it's gonna run down around. <clears throat> it's gonna give me power to my fuel pump. And it's as easy as that, that's it. If you wanna rewire one of these cars, start there. Um, that's, it's, it's gonna make it a lot easier than buying a giant painless kit that has all these wires for a horn and relays and headlights and radio and just get the car to where it's kind of modernized and where you can kind of add stuff as you go. That way you can get it wired up, fired up, and going. And then the second video that I make, it's going to be a video on um, the headlights, the brake lights. I'm gonna add turn signals. And now that I have this all wired up, modern-ish, all I basically have to do is just tap off of this fuse panel and run all everything else. Or for the lights, I'm going to have to run a headlight switch. I may even do this to where as soon as you start the vehicle up, the headlights automatically come on. Um, and then the radio, I'll, I'll, I'll put that on the accessory. But I'll show you all that later. That's It's as easy as that. Hook your alternator up, your starter solenoid, your fuse panel, run the power wires to the key switch, and boom, you'll be good to go. Um, and I'll send a 12 volt fuse panel. All of this cost, uh, it cost me around $240. Um, so I say it's worth it. You're gonna have, number one, you're gonna have bet easier starting. Number two, it's gonna be easier to find a battery. Number three, you're gonna be able to add accessories. Number four, you're gonna have brighter light. Um, you can add a radio. Uh, just, it's gonna be, uh, alternators are gonna be super cheap. I mean, you could buy another one of these $50 alternators and you can throw it in the trunk. And if you break down the side of the road, you don't have to deal with an alternator. You don't have to deal with the voltage regulator. You don't have to deal with figuring out if the, to sand the points on the generator, um, uh, voltage regulator. You don't have to mess with all that stuff. This is lighter. It's, it's, it's just easier all around, just easier to deal with. And you could always, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loom all these wires. I'm gonna put them in black loom so it's it's cleaned up. And then if you wanted to, you could even buy a generator that looks like an alt, uh, an alternator that looks like the factory original generator. So it looks like a big, ugly uh, generator, but it's a 12 volt alternator. And nobody will really be able to tell. You could even, you know, hide that fuse panel somewhere under the dash. But yeah, that's it. Part two will be lights, radio, etc.